Hi, this is Bo Beard, LG Sales Engineer, here to give you an overview of our Connected Care DMS or Device Management solution. LG Connected Care DMS is primarily focused in the education market. Within DMS, you can add devices such as our WebOS enabled displays and projectors or our new Create board, the TR3DEK. The first window you'll see when you log into DMS is the dashboard. Now the dashboard's a great tool to quickly take a look at your entire fleet of products and see if there are any issues that you need to address. You can see I have 16 devices that I've added to my DMS account. Within the device issue summary, we break it down between errors and warnings. Errors are typically a bit more critical and require you to intervene a little faster, where warnings are a little bit more like high memory or CPU utilization, uh, so something just to keep you generally aware of. Uh, directly beneath that, we have our apps that are in use, uh, ranked by how many devices are using them and how often. Uh, you can see number one is library. Now, our TR3DK is an Android-based solution, so a lot of these applications that you see here are based on the Android operating system. Directly beneath that, we have various breakdowns of errors that you may see. Luckily, my devices have been behaving pretty well, so I don't have anything to address at the moment. Uh, directly beneath that, uh, the schedule history. Uh, anytime you set up schedules for the displays to adhere to, you can see a record of those occurring here. So that's a quick overview of the dashboard. Since we're here, I want to quickly navigate up to the top right to show you a little bit more uh, before we go into the other pages. So alert messages, uh, these will allow you to send an alert message quickly to either all of your devices that you have added or specific groups that you've created. Uh, you can see that you can create custom alert messages to send as you need. I'll show you how to customize those later in a different section of this solution. Uh, but this is a good way to send out emergency notifications such as fire warning or the event if there's an early dismissal due to weather at a school. Directly next to that, we have our file box. Uh, file box is useful and unique tool to D Connected Care DMS. Uh, within the file box, you can see we have image, video, audio, file, and apps. So using your included one gigabyte of cloud storage, you can upload a variety of content types that can be then deployed out to these displays. Uh, this can be a very useful, almost light content management solution in instances where you want to be able to quickly send out messaging to your devices. So you can see I have a couple example images loaded here uh, for certain events that may occur at a school. That also includes video, audio. Files here would be typically um, either documents or something else along those lines. And applications, uh, you can see it is limited to APK files at the moment. So your Create Board products that are Android based, you can add any APK files that you'd like to load on those displays here for quick deployment. So directly next to that, we have our Notice Board. Uh, notice Board is just mostly uh, notifying you of any software updates that have occurred. Uh, so it's a good thing to check in on every now and then in case you need to update your DMS application. Uh, finally, we have our account. So this is my account information. Uh, yours will obviously look different depending on what email you've linked to the service. So general overview of the first page of DMS. Uh, we'll keep moving on here. Next page is device management. Now this is where all the magic happens. Here you can see I have a few groups created along with a list of all the devices that have ever been associated with this account. So you can see I alluded to the wide variety of products that can be added here. Uh, we have some of our WebOS commercial TV and display products along with our new BU70 QGA projector. Directly beneath that we have our TR3DK and TR3DJ create board products. Now within this menu you can see I have the option to select all or even select just a select few devices. Once you do that this unlocks various capabilities for you to utilize. So I'm just going to give you a quick idea of what that looks like. So say I select this product here. I can select broadcast, quickly send one of those file types we discussed earlier. This also includes live streaming. So if you have um, RTP or RTSP stream, for example, you can put in that information here and then broadcast it to the displays. Uh, we can also quickly take control and do some basic operation settings with the remote control function. You can see some examples of those here. These can be very useful for certain scenarios where you want to make sure that displays can't be touched or manipulated in any way for presentations. It's also a good troubleshooting tool if you need to quickly power off or reboot the displays, for example. 
Now from this device management tab, we also have the ability to go into the details section of individual devices. Here we can manipulate quite a few settings on the devices, so let's take a quick look. Now if this device was connected, here in the overview tab we'd see a preview of what's being shown on screen. You can also see uh, issue statuses related to this individual device. You can gather device information. This includes serial number, so if you have any troubleshooting that you need to do, you can get that information here to provide to our support team, along with the current firmware version, IP address, MAC address, etc. So this uh, is a good insight into how the device is behaving and what uh, information that's relevant to it. If you have APK files that you loaded into your file box and then deployed, those would be displayed here as well. From this update tab, we have the ability to either upload a firmware update uh, from a USB stick connected directly to the display. We can also upload that firmware file to our included one gigabyte of cloud storage and select that here and push that update to the display. No updates occur automatically, um, but it is a good way to manage them in the event of some troubleshooting or updates that you need to take advantage of. Multimedia controls are fairly standard. These include changing the inputs on the display. Uh, so if you do need to toggle between that and want to do it remotely, this is where you would do that. Some more general configuration and uh, control options. You can see we have power cycling. Uh, you can also create an individual device schedule. So if you have a device in a location where you want to be able to tell it to turn on and off at a certain time, you can configure that here. You can also do that on a much larger level to include all the devices or a group of devices. Bear in mind, if you do want to have remote power on capabilities, you do have to have the displays hardlined to utilize Wake on LAN to trigger that. Here's where you would actually be able to enable that Wake on LAN setting that I just discussed. We also have the ability to allow installation of unknown applications. If you do plan on loading your own APK files to our CreateBoard products, this is where you would do that. Now, one of the coolest features in my mind for DMS is this data cloning. So data cloning can actually occur automatically with all devices that are on the same network. So for example, you can unbox your first CreateBoard product, get everything configured the way you'd like it. This includes customizing the background, application layout, other settings such as that, and then export that setting data to the server. Once that setting data is found there, you can then set up, which I'll cover here in a little bit, you can set up an automatic import of that setting by essentially connecting your other create boards to the same network, then they'll automatically grab this setting file and apply it. The final section in this device details section is the history. So this will show you various issues that the display has run into over time. That includes CPU usage and various other things like that. One other thing I'll show you on this device management tab is the operation settings. So if we have groups set up, as I do here, I'll select my default group, for example. That's a quick way to get an overview of just the devices contained within that group. And you can see that within a group, we can adjust the operation settings. These operation settings allow you to set up a schedule. As you can see here, we have some of these displays set to turn on at 9 and turn off at 6. Uh, we also have various thresholds that we can establish. Uh, so this can be useful for IT and other administrators who want to set up uh, email notifications in the event that there are issues with the devices. You can set this to trigger in the event of high storage usage, for example, so that you don't have a display have more issues down the road by filling up its storage. Um, you can see you would just hit add here, fill in that information, and then those will be triggered when those thresholds are met. This is what I spoke about earlier, the auto cloning. So we can upload that settings file that we exported from our baseline display and then basically tell any other display that's added to DMS to copy those settings over. We can also schedule auto updates. I would advise caution using this feature. Auto update sounds like a great idea, and a lot of times it is, but I would strongly encourage any administrators using this to review any release notes before applying them to ensure they don't have any issues with applications they've installed or anything along those lines. So that's our device management tab. So next I'm going to move on to the schedule tab found directly beneath that.
So here within the schedule tab, you can probably guess that here we can create schedules for various groups of devices to adhere to. Here you can title your schedule based on the location, group, et cetera, whatever works best for you. Uh, you can also set either a schedule that will repeat indefinitely, or you can schedule that to occur from a certain date and time. And here are the other options that we have. So you can also set up schedules for not only on and off, but disabling or enabling certain inputs, disabling the touch screen, certain brightness or sound levels uh, to install a certain package or a broadcast a video or audio file. All that can be done here within the schedule tab. So useful tool for creating a schedule for various forms of content or settings that you want to be applied during that time. Directly beneath schedule, we'll go into app management. App management is where it'll show you any APK files you've uploaded to your file box. It's a good way to quickly see when the file was uploaded in the instance that there's an update for the APK file along with its name, date, etc. Now directly beneath app management, we have issue management. Now we saw the issues that were being flagged on the dashboard when we logged in earlier. So if you do see any issues crop up, this is a good place to navigate to to get a better view of those issues that have occurred previously. Directly beneath issues, we have administration. Now this is a good section to be aware of because this will be something that you'll need to use to not only add other users to your DMS solution, but also to get the information you need to add a device. First, we have the profile section here. You will need to provide your password for each of these sections because it does give an overview of your entire system and represents security risk. So we'll go ahead and log in here. And here you can see the information about your account. You can see user information. If you want to set up two-step verification, you can do that here as well, along with adjusting your password. Currently, we support Google OTP for two-step verification. You can set your time zone, the way you'd like your date to be viewed, um, and then your account number. Now, the account number is very important. When you're enrolling devices into DMS, you will need that account number to then add them to your DMS portal. Now, if you're an IT administrator or someone else who'll be managing the DMS platform, user management is very important as well. So under user management, you can see that I've had a few people added. I've blurred their name for privacy's sake. Um, but here you can come in and invite a new user to join the DMS solution. Uh, so you can put in their email address, they'll receive an invite that they respond to, and then they'll be able to at, log in and manipulate these devices. Now, how much control you give them is entirely up to you. So you can see I can create a new user group. So for example, I currently have the default group. Let's create a new one and see what we can do. We can go ahead and create a new user group. We'll call this user group teachers. Now we don't want the teachers to be able to do everything an administrator might be able to do, but here we can adjust that to our liking. So let's say teachers are allowed to broadcast content along with taking control of the device. So once we set that up, we can then assign various users that we've allowed into our DMS portal and give them the proper permissions that we deem necessary. So we can also adjust those groups within the user group settings. We can then navigate down to history. This will show you a record of everyone who's logged in, what their password is, the IP address where they're accessing it, etc. Directly beneath history, we have registration request. This section will show you outstanding registrations, emails that have been sent that haven't been responded to yet. You can see that all of my users here have responded, so I don't have any outstanding requests. The final section within Connected Care DMS is settings. You can get information on our terms of use and privacy policy here, the current version that's being released, and adjust your language. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great day.